Welcome to our molecular biology lab. Let's go inside. In here is our wet lab. That means that we do all of our reactions involving DNA extractions or RNA or protein work, as well as mixing different chemicals in this room. We have a lot of equipment that we use to spin things down, to mix things up, heat them up, and also just to measure and pour. Every scientist has a set of pipettes that we use to measure out really minuscule amounts of fluid that we can then put into our mini reaction centers like these Eppendorf tubes. Since we work on such a small scale in biology, that's all that's really needed for us to mix our reactions or do our experiments. Also in our lab, we have a variety of different fridges and freezers at negative 20 degrees, four degrees, and in our other room, negative 80 degrees. Different chemicals need to be kept at different temperatures in order to help stop degradation or just to store them and keep them fresh for a certain amount of time. And then if you come this way, this is our gel imaging room. Being molecular biologists, and working with such small molecules, we use something called a gel in order to visualize what we're working with. We make them and run them in these different apparatus, and we use stains in order to visualize the molecules that we're seeing. Some other machines that we have in this room include our PCR machines, which are basically like Xerox copy fax machines for DNA. Our nanodrop, which we use to measure the concentration of what our DNA samples are. And this apparatus, which we use for photography of all of our gels. Welcome to our chemical room, where we store all of the different chemicals needed for all of our different experiments. This is also where we mix all of our different reagents. We weigh certain things out on a scale, and then we use an automated stirring machine to mix in our different powders into liquids. It uses a little stir bar like this and a magnetized bottom. We can crank it up and get things stirring. In here is our tissue culture and bacterial systems. Here's our hood where we keep everything aseptic and clean in order to work with bacteria or with very sterile samples. Here are two of our really large negative 80 degrees Celsius freezers which we use for more long-term storage of DNA or different tissue samples. Over here are our growth racks, where we grow everything from blueberries to basil to hops and different succulents, even Venus flytraps and coleus. We start off tissue culture and plant regeneration by growing our plants in a sterile environment, just like in these little Tupperware containers. This plant is not contaminated by any other bacteria or anything outside in the air. Next, we cut them up into teeny tiny squares and we place them on a plate that has growth medium and different hormones on it to mimic different stages of development. And we create something called a callus that is very similar to a tumor or maybe an embryo before it becomes differentiated. Next, we switch to another medium that promotes shoots to grow. On here, we see the brown callus and the shoots that are now growing up out of it. This is so cool because instead of growing plants from a seed like we normally do, we can make a clone of a plant by cutting up a tiny piece of its leaf and mimicking different developmental stages. In this room, we have a bunch of different microscopes that we use to visualize the small surfaces that we work on. Here is a dissecting microscope, and here is a confocal light microscope. Both of these microscopes have the ability to excite different particles and produce a glow, which is something characteristic of different proteins that we study. And now for the most expensive pieces of equipment in our whole lab our GCMS and our LCMS. A GCMS is 
a large analytical chemistry equipment that we use to study the different compounds that make up flavor and aroma, and the scents of different flowers, and the taste of strawberries. This part is the gas chromatography, where we can separate out the different compounds in a sample. Then each compound makes its way to the mass spectrometer, which can ID each compound by a fingerprint. Another aspect of our facilities is our spectral science rooms. These are the rooms which we can detain all of our different color LED lights. We use these lights to do treatments on flowers and plants and test the growth the plants have. So if you follow me in here, we have four different boxes, each with a small range of wavelengths being emitted. In this box, we only have red light. In this one, only blue, green, and yellow. Each plant will have different growth patterns depending on the light being given to it. So if we place a plant under red light, it may grow a certain way, whereas if we place it under blue light, it will grow completely different. And we use these types of rooms to experiment on growth patterns of plants and the volatiles emitted from these plants when they're growing in there. A second spectral science room is in here. These are a little bit different and contain smaller light chambers. This ones only have all red light, but they're different amounts of red light. So if you look in, these are our small LED panels, and under the panels is showing the light with our flower treatments um, in there. We have various ways in which we grow plants in our facility, one of which is through greenhouse. We have different types of greenhouses, but this one is our smallest and most accurately controlled one. It's both air conditioned and heated to keep the inside at a constant 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you walk in, you'll see all the different petunia flowers we grow. We have both the purple one and white petunia flowers, which have different purposes. The purple ones we use for protoplast work and developmental work with the plant growth, whereas the white ones we specifically use for volatiles. The white petunia flowers are very potent and very smelly, so they're easy to study the volatile effects um, using these types of flowers. If you look over here, these are just small baby plants, which are eventually going to be these big guys, but they're just small and, and take time to grow. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed our lab tour. If you want to learn more about plant science and see some really cool experiments to do with plants, follow us here and check out our website at exploringplants.com. Hope to see you there.